Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. I'm Haley Kincaid, and this is my dog, Solomon. <laughs> and this is my channel all about eco-friendly cleaning, organizing, lifestyle, beauty, food, all that sort of stuff. Eco-friendly living, basically. Uh, but today, I am going to show you how to vacuum in an efficient manner, and how to use shark vacuums, which are all pretty similar, and they're my favorite type of vacuum. No, I'm not sponsored, obviously. I only have like 80 followers on here, <laughs> maybe less. Um, so this is not sponsored. I really just love shark vacuums. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I will go over a few of the elements of the shark vacuums. and what you can clean in them and how you can keep them running to the best of their abilities. So there's quite a few plugins in a regular shark, so I will link which one this specifically is, but a lot of this stuff will translate to any shark vacuum that you have, or probably other brands a little bit too. Okay, so with sharks, first thing is this is a bagless vacuum. So you can pop this off and it just fills up the canister and you can empty it from the top or the bottom. And there's some dirt in here right now so I won't do that. So you can pop that off and then inside you find the first two filters. One that looks like this and a flat one like this. These are both hand washable and you'll want to wash these pretty often um, depending on how often you vacuum your house maybe once every two weeks or once a month or so. Um, you can just literally wash them with soap and hot water. And then what I usually like to do too is put a couple of essential oils on each of these and that way when you vacuum it'll fill up your whole house with the smell of essential oils. So there's those two filters. And the third filter is this one. And this one you won't really have to do anything with or replace or anything for a long time but that pops off and this filter pops out as well. And every once in a while, you can put some essential oils in this if you want to, but really it's enough to do it in the other one. I try not to mess with this for as long as possible, but they do have those for sale if you need to replace it. So there's those three filters. And then this hose pops off. So you can vacuum uh, like under couches like that or around corners with the long hose. You can also pop that part off and vacuum with this little guy or there's some attachments that usually come with this that you can vacuum with this little guy that pops off. This is also a good way if your vacuum sounds clogged or it's clogged and not sucking, you can pop this off, look through it to make sure that's not clogged um, check and see where it's clogged in the hose, turn it on, and try to pop out whatever's clogged. Then this hose totally comes off here too, and most of the newer models of the Shark um, are electrically linked, so like if this is off, the whole Shark won't run, so that has to be fully plugged in. But I think that just pops off so that in case anything gets clogged right here, you can unclog that as well. So that pops off like that. And there's also a connection between this hose and this metal hose part, whatever you want to call it. So that goes in there like that. Then I also really like, <clears throat> excuse me, I also really like this model because it comes with this floor attachment and this works really well on hardwood floors. Um, I'll show you on the main vacuum there is a setting for hardwood floors, but this um, really does a better job. And you would just put it on the end like this and vacuum like that. So that's how that would work. Okay, and then another area that is important to clean on your vacuum is this under area where the brush roll is. As you can see, there's a bunch of hair and Yarn, you know, chunks of carpets and stuff rolled up in here. What you can do is just take a pair of scissors and cut that and then pull it out because you don't want this brush to stop spinning. And if it's clogged up like this, then it's not going to be cleaning your floor as well either. Um, and the bottom of this, you can see 
it also unlocks. You can take a little a quarter or something and unlock these and pop this off because some dirt will get clogged in this little area sometimes. Um, and you can just clean it out like that. So that's kind of the inner workings of the vacuum. So now I will show you how to actually vacuum. When vacuuming, I like to, say I'm just going to vacuum this rug. I like to start at one end of the rug and work my way to the other side in a really efficient way so that I know that I'm covering the entire area. So what I'll do is move my vacuum in a way that goes up and back. And when you go back, you kind of come at a little bit of an angle and you're gonna go straight up, back at a little angle, straight up. And that way, especially if your carpet leaves or has, especially if your carpet is able to have imprints of lines in it, this will leave a really nice pattern, triangle pattern throughout the whole rug. So I'll just demonstrate that. Another tip is you don't want to vacuum too fast so that your vacuum actually has time to pick up um, dirt and debris on the surface. So yeah, then some other random tips are if you're vacuuming an entire room like this, I always start with the area rug because when you're vacuuming an area rug, it might spew some dirt out onto the wood floor. Um, so start with the rugs and then move to the wood floor. So in this room, Say I would start and do this entire rug, then I would start at this end of the room and on the wood floor and then move myself out of the room. And I vacuum the wood floor the same way that I vacuum rugs, up and back. But as you can see on this and probably any other vacuum that you have has different floor settings. So it has a high, high pile carpet, a low pile carpet, and a wood floor carpet. So I use a regular low pile carpet on pretty much everything besides a really shaggy rug. Um, and then I use the wood floor setting on wood floor and obviously. So yeah, you would just change settings between rugs and floors. And then you can go around though too with your hose if you need to get like under a tight space like this. Um, and get under there. Or, another cool thing about the shark is you can press a button like this and this lifts away. So if you need to get under something like a bed or a low furniture piece, you can get under it a lot further like that. Um, so those are two ways to get under things really well. And then I always remind people when you're deep cleaning um, and vacuuming a room, move your furniture pieces or things that are sitting on your floor um, and get underneath them because you might not think like, oh, that's that basket is sitting there. You might not think that dirt and dust gets underneath it, but it does. So like this ottoman, for example, that we have, every time I vacuum this rug, I always move the ottoman off and then move it back on when I'm done because you want to get underneath pieces like that. So that's basically the vacuum tutorial. Hopefully this helps you guys a little bit with some tips. Um, and you, if you've been vacuuming in a squirrely way or just swiveling all around, no worries. I'm sure it was still picking up a lot of dust and dirt and it was great that you're vacuuming. This is just a little bit of a tutorial on how to do it super efficiently so that you're not wasting time because who wants to spend their whole day vacuuming? And who wants to miss a bunch of chunks of dust and stuff? Not me. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section of this video and please hit that red subscribe button to support my channel if you so choose i would be very grateful have a great day and happy cleaning